a long, long time ago in a place far, far away. Hello everyone, this is Fantastic Worlds, welcome you back to Lovecraft Country and the Secret World Legends, and we are now back to another bonus episode. Now the bonus episodes are ones that are unlocked every 25 subscribers, and we're currently at 200, which unlocks this episode another audio story, which I'll get to, I'm currently still doing the 175 one, and of course... Lust from Beyond, but if you've been paying attention to the series, you'll probably have known that one was already coming. Anyways, so this time around, since we're at a uh, episode with zero zero at the end, and I always try to say something special for that, I'm going to tackle a story that deals with one of my favorite concepts, which is the power of narrative. Now, you'll remember back when I was in the forest and I was talking to Mazel in his original episode that I referred to the power of narrative. In fact, Mazel over here has been many beings over many times, over many ages, but when the narrative of the age changes, he does too. He He's not, he was a primordial being of uh, mud. He was a entity uh, with the forest. And now he is an old man with great knowledge who fishes because what else are you going to do with eternity? If you get a really good stream beside it, but who holds the knowledge of the ages within him. And he hold that is the power of narrative, the narrative that drives the third and coming fourth age when whatever story that will be, which of course will be is interesting because that hipster dude is, by the narrative of the Secret World Legends, one of the coming gods of the Fourth Age. Probably of chaos and blood, mind you, because of my usual uh, skill set, but you know, somebody's got to handle uh, that concept. Anyways, so let's talk to Mosel, Mosel about that story. Good day to you, too. I don't know entirely what you just said there, but I'm always going to be polite to my fellow Fae, especially to my elders. Okay, the Abandoned. Mosul the Ancient. Mosul the Watcher. He absorbs stories the way trees soak up the light, the way tree roots drink up the dead. <laughs> don't forget, that's what plants do. He asked you to gather stories, then he cast a coin to the river. What stories will the babbling water tell you? Once upon a time, stories make for good currency. Sometimes, currency contains stories. So strange. Travelers wish to pay tolls across my bridge. <laughs> Much mistaken in the telling of that story. It is I who have given the treasures willingly. Yes, treasure of tales. Gold and amber slip through men's hands with no value. <laughs> if man has so much care for sparkling, he should gather the morning dew. It sparkles every sunrise. Stories are our life. We exist only for the little time we are spoken of. When the stories are stopped, the sons and daughters of the wild are gone. Fay. As we came out of the earth, we have passed back into it. My gift to you is... It will not be so soon you say our farewells. You shall find the hidden names of us, born from the forest heart, the painted egg, the cut of young men's love. Moju. In a little time, none will be left here with these names. Gather them, protect them, take them with you far away. Be the world's memory. That is my treasure. Okay. 
So let's run past that a little bit right there. First of all, Mosul's speech. Mosul is referring to the fact that names, of course, have power, but so does narrative. You see, when he asks us to carry forth these stories, he's asking us to carry forth the names of these beings into the fourth age so they can be reborn. These tales are begun told to us because we are immortal, for one thing. We're probably immortal as long as the fourth age, because one day we'll be the Mosul, passing on to the fifth age. And his addition that we are part of the buzzing, which is the collective intelligence of the Gaian spirits. Now, that's the thing that's interesting, is I have a theory about the buzzing, that the buzzing is the consciousness of all the bees that have gone before, after our bodies have worn out, that we retain as part the immortal memory of Gaia. Our immortality is such, once material form has long passed away, but... Let's get to what he wants us to do first. First of all, we gotta find the currency. Now, I'm trying to judge where it would be. There, I can see the glow. Now, I do have to apologize. I did attempt this. Quick access inventory updated. I did attempt this story uh, mission once before, but it's kind of difficult to do without it without a bit of cheating. So I had to. Sorry about that. Had to uh, consult a guide for part of it. Sorry about the sound there, but the problem is I got a pop-ups going kind of nuts here. So, at the moment, the next stage we're supposed to go to is to translate this story on this coin. Now, this is Alexander the Great. And the translation, because I had to look at it. I've never found the actual translation to this, but it both mentions tombs and tales. When we know where the tombs are in here, in that particular graveyard that has Dracula's uh, tomb in it. So... Let's go find out. Now, the actual importance of... Let's see. Let's check the map. What are we doing here? Ignore this. This goes to the current mission. Real uh, We're doing the story, but yeah. Over here to... Yeah, the corpse. Where are we in this way? So it shouldn't take too difficult to get there. Just take a hang right, I think, this way. All right, let's go. Right. I like him. He is literally, as we are both Fey, he is my older, the older, cooler, um, uncle. Hmm. Wait, am I going the right way? I always ask myself these things. It's been a little while since I came back to this, um, zone. Currently, I'm doing the Tokyo missions in the real story time, but, uh, ah, God, I gotta get up there and get that at some point. Talking about tails and getting th and getting them. Where's the entrance again? Now, if this takes me too long again, I will most definitely shift over. Actually, wait a minute. I remember there's a hole in this section down here. So even if I can't find it, I'll get us in. But yeah, I gotta get up there and get that somehow. Ugh, I hate the fact you can't climb those things. I mean, I can teleport to only select locations. I can have a hoverboard, but, you know, I just can't grasp onto stone and pull myself up. I don't understand that. I really don't. Okie doke. Uh, yep. Uh, could have teleported the well. Apologies. But in any case, uh, just hop in here. The front door is usually more guarded. Okay, guys, I'm not here. Oh, for crying out loud. Guys, I was totally legit with the... Us just calling it a day. Because I'm over leveled at the moment for you guys. Burn. I'm not too over leveled. Alright, so what we gotta do is poke around and see if we can find some open tombs. Because, poke. Oh, excuse me, madam. Still want to play? Why do they sound like goats? Seriously, goats. Alright, there's a tomb over there. A couple of them, but they're all guarded. And we can do this. Not this tomb. Guess it might be this tomb. And it's not this tomb. 
I fear her mouth. Her face is like this cartoon thing if you get really close to it. It's very weird. Okay. Yeah, switching it over to switching over the um, keyboard to Greek characters is kind of something a little beyond my capabilities at the moment. I mean, this combination is not bad, but there's always room for improvement. Okay, it's not you. And there's the damn goat bleat. Okay, so it appears to be this one right here. Uh, if you're looking at the map, by the way, it's right about here. Uh, it's seven, yeah, coordinates, seven, five, four, five, seven, nine. Um, the thing is, is that it just happens to be the only one in the yellow. There's nothing here that shows it, but you do see the two statues, which is kind of unique. So let's see what's in the crypt. Okay, so here we are in the mysterious tomb, which, you know, hopefully doesn't have a giant shelob in it. All right, so the ancient pedestal, let's see what it has to say. Okay, and here it is. This, of course, is also Greek, and why I didn't go through and try to do a translation. I mean, if I could copy and paste this thing into a translator, I would, but unfortunately, it being a graphic, I can't do that. But here is the translation, but I got from Google Foo, so to speak. Three sisters born from the blood of the great, where their condition defined to protect themselves from the fate, immortal and wild from the effects of time, their real name kept secret from the knot. It doesn't rhyme in English, obviously, but the knot is could be some form of binding. But the three sisters are daughters of Alexander the Great. Now, I've already been told that the Alani is one of the these beings, so that one got spoiled to me earlier on, but... It's not really that much of a spoiling. The thing is, remember, in order to escape the fate, the fate of all mortal beings is to die. To it's also quite possible that after Alexander's death that his daughters would have been put to death to ensure that there was no legacy from Alexander that would threaten any of the generals that overthrew him. Because if you know your history, he was overthrown by generals that were kind of pissed that he had been taking his empire out for 20 years rather than, you know, actually creating a new one. It's creating the functional system, which is why his empire completely collapsed after his death. It's why I sometimes refer to him as Alexander the Not-So-Great. In any case... Him with three daughters that became the Aileni, which we've seen before in one of the previous missions. Missions, let's see if I remember to link that mission up there, but as essentially a voiceless fae. Now, they said to escape the fate. It's, like I said, escape the fate of death. It became immortal, just the same way he did with. Not as a bee, but accepted by some other power, a power of this forest as one of the guardians. Now, of course, things fade, as Moza was saying. Where there are three sisters, there is now one that we know of. I have not seen any other ones. He's also, the Aileni was one of the, um, ones mentioned by him earlier as the names we are to preserve, and this is probably how we're going to be doing it. Now, let's run over and see what else is going. Oof, you can come back, double back and see that. It's like these torches. I mean, who goes around and lights these things? Why do some of them out and why are some of them going? I guess maybe it's the same technology we saw in Egypt. Anyways, so yeah, this is the far end here, and this, of course, being a um, red means I can just destroy the knot, destroy the binding on the book. Now, normally this may be a bad thing, but remember, Mosul's having us preserve the information within the immortal matrix of the buzzing through us, which is what his entire thing is about. All right. Oh, now you translate. Okay, you can't do Greek bees, but you can do Old English. Okay, cool. And so, who Alexander, whose history calls great... Uh, Empire sculptor and undefeated victory crowned, defeated by a mosquito, motherfucker, lay cold, lay dead, a congress of worms. And whether by fever, rot, or by poisoner's plot, again, some people think he was poisoned and the mosquito thing was a cover-up. Hey, conspiracy theories go back to 4th century BC. Who is there left to say? So the concubine of Alexander took flight. He never actually had a wife. Some people, some people suspect he was bisexual and that his BFF forever was also his lover. Let me just turn that off. So many fearful miles. So, okay. So he, this universe, he also did not go to Romania. His concubine fled there. My guess is that would be because of where she came from. She'd obviously want to go back to her family. You know, had enough of being... Well, concubine also usually means slave. She could have been a slave purchased or taken by him to become his concubine. And as such, she has no power. 
A wife of Alexander would have some dynastic power. A concubine, not so much. And the bastard children, again, they could be considered a threat if imperialistic dynasties, but considering none of Alexander's <laughs> workings lasted, not really a problem. But Katrina, Zelina, and Marina. All sire by the one called the Great. Oh, hey, there's a theme. In the Dark Forest, the mother made a pact with Gaia, there's the power we're talking about, and released her three daughters, brothers of the Great, into the wilderness, protected under Gaia's gaze, as we are. And the three daughters drank deep the supernatural nectar, a.k.a. anima, the same thing that powers us as well, forever preserved, forever sweet. Sweetling? Like I said, they are not bees, because the bees are specifically weapons of Gaia to be held outside of space and time within Agartha, to only be drawn into this world in time. Now, there's a reason for that, is that we are too dangerous. We are too powerful. We cannot be allowed to, to go off our leash, because the ones that do, the ones that make packs with the dreamers, the ones that go rogue, they're dangerous because they're unkillable. And that is a problem. If we have to come against our own, that's going to be an endless battle. Uh, so the Aleli came to be, and so they are still, forever preserved, forever sweet. And this is the warning invitation, who is there left to say? In other words, is this a fate that you would want to choose? They are immortal, but they've also lost their humanity. She cannot speak, just like we cannot speak, because we also do not retain our humanity. We retain the memory of our humanity, which is why our form resembles us. But the fate, yeah, I'm going to leave that to you to decide, just like it's just like um, the uh, narrator here. But in any case, we should check with our sister, because apparently... That's the only one we can. Now, he says to locate one of the sisters, but we don't know if the other two are around. Like I said, I speculated that they faded. They may be part of the buzzing now. Just as we, one day, will be part of the buzzing. And see you on the top side. Okay, so here we are, chilling with my older sis, Ilei. Remember, she doesn't have a name anymore. She is the Ilei, just as I am a bee. Remember, they call us Sweetling. They don't call us by name. In fact, we don't have a name as far as the guy is concerned. We have a function. But when I teleported in over there, apparently what happened is I triggered the location thing and she immediately gave me a children's book and told me to check it out. Now, let me ask you a question. Let's say the bargain comes. Uh, whoops, hit the, hit the microphone mistake. Let's say the bargain comes to you. You want to, Would you be immortal in the service of the uh, Earth Mother to live forever in youth and beauty, or at least for an age, 4,000, 6,000 years, but be part be defined as having a role for the earth mother in that time the Ilei and i both work as defenders i as the um defender in general and her of the forest in general this forest i mean as opposed to in general and we have our benefits i channel elemental power she has eternal youth beauty and strength so tell me would you consider that a bargain worth having in any case, let's talk about other types of bargains, compacts and such, because we are Fey. We are going and we that's gonna be one of the defining things of our characteristics. Now, children's book. This one shows kind of a typical fairy tale. Well, not one of the better ones. One of the darker ones, the ones that before Grimm decided to uh, make them all pretty, where a man comes to a forest and sees a mysterious woman in black, gothed up the 14th century, leads him deep into the forest and eats his heart. Now, I looked for a translation on this and I don't have it. Uh, my Latin is really bad, but it does say that she, uh, a woman copuj descended from the trees, Vesubicata, Mama Padore. That was the member of the elemental being that had been driven mad by the uh, filth that the doctor told us to kill. That's been quite a few missions back. If I remember, I'll put a link here. In which the filth had destroyed their minds and made them into mindless beasts, but before, they had been cunning killers. They had been the ones who lure men in. Now, in a previous um Mish interlude, which should be, if you're watching this in real time, should be um, the one in the same week, assuming everything drops on schedule. I meant uh, we got into a conversation with the vampire lord hiding in the no church there detected. that Initiated. whether or not humanity needed the vampires. There's, oh, there's the dude. Okay, so we should just follow this guy. Whether humanity needed vampires the way the herd of deer, for example, need a, need a, um, where are you? Whether a herd of deer need a wolf, are they designed to cull the weak from out from us? Does a vampire's victim reduced from our gene pool make humanity stronger? Or, uh, interesting shorts you got there, dude. Plaid? Seriously? 
Anyways. Are we bugged? Because seriously, I hope we're not bugged. It's just kind of wandering in a circle here. I think something's supposed to happen. Maybe we should check out around the area. Ah, there she is, the dark lady. Mampadorai, remember, the Fae are dark and light. Then even the light ones, are like us, are dangerous. The dark ones, on the other hand, the dark ones are predators as well. But unlike the vampires... Ooh, yeah, there you go, dude. I'm sure it's all in the up and up. This mysterious woman just took one look at you in those manly shorts and decided she just couldn't live without laying with you in the, uh, in the grass. And, you know, it's strange how she keeps just putting you further and further away. Now, if you remember back in Death and Axes, the, when I did the interviewed, I do I know, way back in, um, the last Haven one, I think it's Interlude 21, we went over the rules that the forest gods spoke of. That there are parts of the forest that are as compacted that you are safe, like the Romney camp. You stay in the Romney camp in your territory, we won't hunt you. But if you step outside, you are declaring yourself prey. You're declaring yourself in violation of the compact of safety. And whatever happens to you, happens to you. And it's nobody's fault but your own for breaking that compact. All right, dude, sure, this is looking good. She likes to, you know, do it in water. Filthy water. Yeah, yeah, she must be into that stuff. I'm going to guess, by the way, that she's got some supernatural ability because, let's face it, even the dumbest guy should know something's up. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, yes, you stepped into the sacred circle. You are, oh, I was just here to watch. You didn't have to screw with me. Hey, oh, stores it in space, and I don't like the flavor of that. Now she's laughing because you have bound yourself to her in the circle. Oh, and a little blood magic. Hey, I just learned that trick myself. And she is now stronger. And the herd has been, had a fool removed from it. Lady, you got ugly. Oh, who am I to say I'm a... Thing is, we're still human in outlook in a lot of ways. Simply because... Okay, let's check this body out. See if you get the wallet. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm an old-fashioned role player. Anyways, it's Romanian. Oh, God. Okay, so the text... I don't have an exact translation, but the text talks about a Romanian Easter custom of dropping eggshells into the stream. At the coordinates... Okay, um... Okay, so it tells us to go to the far western corner of the shadowy forest at map coordinates 315 I'm reading this off of the uh, one of the previous player's notes. Like I said, I tried doing this one straight up, but even if I managed to type all of this into Romanian with the special characters, I wouldn't get an exact translation from Google. Okay, in the meantime, what we're going to do with the throw eggshells, where do we have... Oh, we've got an egg, don't we? Yep. So apparently the guy was... You're carrying around eggshells. I don't know what you wanted them for. Anyways, I'm teleporting out of here. Hang on. Okay, so here we are at the beginning of the stream that cuts through the southern half, if you notice here, of the river. It actually becomes later connected to the other ones where the only was it was. So essentially, the note tells us to go to the source of waters. This is the source of water. And to throw the eggshells in. All right. We've done that. Now we're supposed to follow them. If you can see, they're okay to see kind of see the froth burn them, and I don't honestly think that eggshells would produce that much froth. But, I guess we're going to be following us for a bit. I did spend a little time clearing out the monsters in the area, just so I don't get attacked periodically. Yeah, I left one of the trophies back there. The infected fawn horns are ridiculously easy to get to get for a drop, so not even really worth, you know, saving for uh, selling at the market. I mean, I'd like to use some of the mine pieces and such for that, but... Okay, did we do this right? Do I see it? What's going on? Oh, there we go. Yeah, you can lose it in the froth sometimes. Alright, all right, come on, come on. Don't glitch on me, dude. Don't glitch on me. There you are. Yeah, I didn't know there was a Romanian custom of throwing eggshells under the water to find... I guess to make a wish or something similar to that? But... The custom is, is that they're painted with a story, which is again leading to the whole narrative thing again, about how stories are what binds a civilization or possibly even reality together. Ah, the narrative's a prey and predator for the, um, Padori, which are the dark fae, which will eat your heart 
if you go too far into the forest. But the question is, what's this particular one? There you are. Do -do 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 -do. Gets really dull, I'll skip ahead, but you know. That this mission is kind of a bad rap because it's kind of uneventful, but sometimes you I just need a peaceful mission among all the slaughter fests. I mean, killing guys over and over again, setting them on fire, is only happy for so long. Whoa, what's that? Yeah, this part I actually haven't gotten to before. Um, wait, how am I supposed to do that? Oh, right. Uh-huh. Let me guess. That portal has to be activated. And apparently, according to this guide, I have to be dead to activate it. Which makes sense, as we've got, like, the village of the damned over there. All right, so let me kill myself, and then I'll be right back, okay? So here we are back in the underworld, and apparently this is where the other guy dropped. Now the Bajani are gnomes, which we've met the kind of humorous before, where we kind of uh, were saying, haha, isn't it kind of funny how they're making the gnome Marxist? But this is kind of where they came from originally. Now the gnomes themselves appear to have an affinity for death magic, which I suppose could correspond with their earth magic, in that earth is, well, the interment of all things. It's where all things arise and come from. Now, water is necessary for life, but earth is necessary for form. Both, the, the, both the creation of form and life force are important when it comes to that, as well as if you really want to get into it, fire and air for the spark of life and air for the breath. And spirit, of course, to animate the soul. Question, now remember that we ourselves are creatures of pure spirit, which means we draw off all four elements and yet are not part of any of them. That's what the anima is, the literal substance beneath. Oh my god, this is this kind of whitewashing effect is for the underworld is, if, I suppose, you know, appropriate for the mood, but sometimes it'd be hard to actually see anything here. Kind of wish they had, you know, appropriate goggles. Maybe the sunglasses aren't helping? Wait, they're not really sunglasses. That's the thing. One of the things about buying clothing in the game is that you're literally not buying the clothing, you're buying the pattern of the anima. And that's why it shows up on our spirit. This is, our soul looks like us in clothes because we choose to see it as something with clothes. Because again, we're horribly human, despite of recently being added to the ranks of the Fey. I wonder, probably... Now the thing is, you remember some of the older beings from previous ones, like uh, the Gandalf wannabe, keep forgetting his name, Aaron, is supposed to be in the biblical sense, back in Egypt, he still has a human form and a human identity, but the question, he, question is what animates him. Uh, he would claim it would be probably the gods, the, the gods of the uh, covenant, the Hebrew covenant, Yahweh, you know, the blank quote-unquote god of the uh, Christian religion. But again, we've already proven that why the host may exist, Gaia is the uh, source of all creation in this world. I mean, the thing is about this sort of, you know, every god exists, every pantheon exists mentality is that you can't think about it for too long because technically you're blaspheming from about a dozen different religions simultaneously. So is, each every, is each being in the universe a separate manifestation of a... Uh, um, divine essence? Is it just the stories, as you know, the narrative saying they were telling, that we shape the gods through our stories? Or are the stories the gods themselves? Are the living narratives that force themselves upon the world? And the dreamers themselves are the ones attempting to erase those um, uh, stories, to essentially return everything back to primal chaos in which they will thrive and writhe and be like the worms of Tiamat before they were slain by Bahmut. Yes, I've been dive, deep diving into mythology lately. I really like um, the fertile stuff from the Fertile Crescent, and I wish I knew more about the Hindu, but it's just so dizzying sometimes. The English translations are never 100%. Oh, uh, we're back at the damned um, castle again. All right, all right. Hopefully there's a well around here I'll be able to regenerate from whenever we get to. There it is over there. That's the weird thing about the anima wells, is they do show up as beacons in the underworld. But yeah, essentially, Hipster Dude is fighting to preserve the stories. The narrative... Ah, uh, God, lag. Narrative DNA of the uh, Gaia's universe. And remember, even 
if the reset happens and the next age begins and we become the gods of the next age, we will carry those stories through and they will manifest in one fashion or another. Like the Alei probably were a story that existed, oh my god, there we go, that existed before the daughters of Alexander because they are a traditional fae that existed before that period of time. But when they accepted the bar when his their mother accepted the bargain with Gaia, she essentially forced them, reshaped them, not forced them, into the store mode of story of the Ilali, and they became as they they did. That is their price for immortality, is they must become part of the story, so to speak. The eternal cycle. Just as we are the bees. The eternal high oh, we're doing it again, aren't we? There we go. The eternal Warriors of Gaia, the living weapons. And of course, through the buzzing, remember we see all those story fragments? We are the, we are the tail keepers. Ah, dude, wherever you're going, I hope you're almost there because I'm running out of things to talk about. Yeesh, whoa. The thing is, I don't know if you can see it or not, but at higher resolution I'm working at now, um, yeah, I've kind of got some, remember the whole graphical stuff for uh, Front Luster and Beyond? It's let me expand a bit here. Um, the, uh, I can see the sort of pattern underneath underneath this when it's just black and white. It's kind of interesting. All right, cool. Now we approach you. There's three of you, which is a sacred number, by the way. Are you the ancestor spirits? I'm trying to approach you guys. I really am. I approach to talk. Camerati. Cam All right. Whatever you said, it's probably got something to do with drinking. That's a sacred. Oh, I can't do it as a spirit. So I've got to take the egg, which is a sacred symbol, by the way. Uh, let's see. Where's the closest? Oh, uh, we got to tell... We, that's right. The animal well's not that far away. Can we get up there, though? Yes, I think we can. Or maybe we can't. Uh, this becomes an issue. I'll uh, find a way around it. Hang on. So, like a certain tale about a Jewish carpenter, we have risen again. Sorry about that. I just couldn't resist it. Anyway, so back to living. We get, The thing is, the great thing about the egg, it was shattered, put in the water, brought into the underworld, then reassembled and brought back by me. Now, the fact that we traveled through water and happened to a brief canal, do you get the symbolism? Death and rebirth. The egg is the shattered life brought together by the tender of, tender of souls into the underworld where it traveled through the river, which is the ancient symbol of, uh, of death and rebirth, to three guardians who reassembled it and gave it to us, the angel of Gaia, to coming back to Earth. It's all narrative. And these are the stories. Mosul, Alexander, the both, yes. Don't know that one. Probably a mouse and a cat. Symbol of the Volva and the elemental fires that bring forth life. There's a lot of ways you can see this. In any case, we must return to Mosul now. Um, hang on, you've been listening to me talk for some time. But, let's see, where are we from here? Mosul's down here. I think we can do this without... I don't know if it lags, I will port us there. All right. So the thing is about Mosul is that he remembers, he spoke before, has been carrying the words of these times, the narrative structure, the the spiritual DNA of this world, of this forest, and he's entrusting it to us as the memory keeper of Gaia and the buzzing to preserve it into the next age so it can manifest. I think I'm heading back to Mosul. Yeah, I am. The guys, just, just chill. I'm just passing through. I hate these things, by the way. The electrified ones are terrible. I like the fact that it's a repairman here. It probably got horribly torn apart the moment, he, moment they uh, realized something was wrong. So, let's go talk to Mosul, shall we? Old man. Quick access inventory updated. Share a story with another secret worlder. Now... What are you doing here when you should be there? Uh-huh. He's talking about the fact that we are to share the story because we are... Oh, kind of like how that worked there. We are not the sole memory keeper. And if something should happen to us or the buzzing gets disconnected from us, we have to share it with another. We have to memetic transmission, unlike the ones online mostly you get, which are bad, bad information or conspiracy theories. This one? This one is a positive meme. Like I said, it's the spiritual DNA of the universe that brings its shape. The narratives that we speak and that we live and that we relive, as we did with the death and rebirth cycle initiation, that we just went with the egg. 
So, let me... There's one place you really know where every secret world there is, and that's going to be um, Agartha. So I'm popping over there. Hang on. So I had kind of a funny thought, by the way. I was thinking about, you know, trying to find... Tr you know how it's easier to attract people with honey than vinegar? So I go to the place where all the honey is, which is the hive of Agartha. Just one of those weird things. But yeah, let's just talk to this person. Now, the way to do this, by the way, it's kind of interesting. You pick one of the items, the egg, the uh, Book of Ilei, or the uh, children's book, and you share the story. So, let's do it. Let's sh But the thing is, what will happen is that this person right here, if they don't already have it, will get a lore fragment corresponding to the part that we used, the gift of ancient stories. As we speak them... I slowly come forward and they mimetically enter her mind telling her of the story of the Elohi and their rebirth and we have trans we have transmitted it we are the transmitter of wisdom and the receiver we are the continuation of the communication throughout the ages of the ancient of stories of death and rebirth from the first stories to the last but yet the cycle always begins again in any case let's see what Kirsten thinks I'm sure she'll think we're wasting our time what is it with this bullshit kids books? Thinking of requesting a spooky kids division. You wouldn't believe how many mysterious deaths trace back to the children wings of some old library. Well, congratulations. You further relation with Mosul, a questionable a contact of questionable relevance, but you never know. I guess it's back to the mystery machine with you, I told you. Yeah. The thing is, just like with uh, the egg, we in some way are also carrying Mosul's story. And when time comes around, another Mose will be born. Because he's already spoken about three incarnations before. We bear the memory of the fort for him for the fourth. We shall be the one, like before, who carries the broken stories of the forest. And when the next uh, iteration of the Earth Mother arrives, when um, Emmy becomes her, she will bear this story and it will manifest upon the world. And once more, the cycles begin again. Well, I do hope you enjoyed this. I realize it's not one of the usual episodes. This is why I usually keep all the more narrative-based ones that aren't the main story oh, um, as the bonus episodes. And again, every 25 uh, subscribers, so it should be the 225 will be the next one. We're about 20 away from there at the current time of recording. We'll bring up another bonus episode. In addition, another another um, one of my live tales of Lovecraft stories. So far, we've managed to hit... Um, from beyond, uh, I believe by this point you should have uh, the um, st statement of Randolph Carter. Yes, I'm doing the smaller ones because, oh my god, I am not a professional voice actor. Hey, dude. Voice actor, and I do my damnedest, but I'm doing what I says. I think the music of Eric Zahn is the next one that we'll be doing because I'm still behind. Um, I'll get that one as soon as I can. And there will be additional one, I think the Cats of Ulthar, for those of you who are, of course, my supporters. Of course, like, share, subscribe if you really like it. My, you can check the, the links down below to the Gumroad payment platform to be the supporters. One dollar gives you bonus material. Two dollars gives you uh, early access. I'm worried my best for the early access, but there is something weird going on with Google lately as it took over a day and a half to process the previous episode. So, like I said, I'm doing my damnedest to try to bring this out for you in time. In any case, I hope to see you next time. And I believe um, we're coming up on uh, uh, From Beyond on September 27th is when it drops, September 27th, 2020, depending on when you're seeing this. Could be way in the past for all I know. Google, after all, appears to be forever. Um, and I do hope you enjoy it, because you guys are the ones unlocked at a 200. And I do have a couple of concepts for the 250 unlock. I'll uh, think about which one will be more, which would be easier for me to do, because, you know, we're in the middle of a civil uprising, a plague, and possibly even global war at some point in the near future. And things are kind of moving up at that. So I will do my damnedest to try to keep my schedule going. See you next time.